Now so far, if we've wanted to store something into a list, we've talked about queues and we've called, uh, created stacks and whatnot, but the kind of interesting thing is we've looked at it in this approach, sort of storing everything inside of an array. All right, well, what if I don't have an array or maybe, uh, in this case, I wanted to add another uh, element to my stack or my queue? I've only got three slots in my array, and so before I even get to make my stack, uh, say for example, uh, I wanted to add four, I would have to come in and make a new array, copy all those elements over, and then I got to add it. Or I maybe double the size, double the capacity of the stack. So this it becomes an issue uh, as we add elements in, because as you can see, it, it becomes a sort of a problem of constantly building our, our, our array. What we do is we, we actually classify this as memory contiguous implementation. So that P is terrible. Implementation. The entire idea is if we think about an array, once again it's this stick of memory and every element just happens to naturally fall in line. So one's there, two's there, three's there, four's there, and they all operate off of some index that just points to them uh, where in the, the variable of that array we store. The issue is, as I keep on kind of pointing out, is as I want to add more elements, that means that has to constantly get bigger. I have to constantly copy over my elements into new arrays and replace arrays, and it can just become uh, very uh, intense, uh, memory intensive. So one of the things we can do is instead of looking at a memory contiguous implementation, we can create something we would call a linked memory. Memory implementation. And this is oftentimes where you start to see the introduction of what we call a linked list. The I idea here is if this is being stored in an array, what if I took that array concept and threw it out the window? Just like with recursion, I took the idea of a loop and I threw it out the window. Well, in this case, I would have some, let's just call it a list for right now, some data type that's a list, and it stores elements inside of it. One of the things that it's going to have in it is something we would classify as my head. What is the top of the list? As we can kind of imagine, that changes uh, depending on if we're looking at a queue, a stack, or any of the other data types that we'll start to get into. Now, the same kind of concept is going to come into play uh, that we saw with an array. As I put elements into, instead of my array, into my list, we won't call them elements because that's actually only just a small portion of uh, everything in there. We're, we're going to use a new generic term considered a node. Now the idea behind this node is there's a lot more going on. Uh, let's again think about our array for a second. If I wanted to sort of know the start, let's say that's the variable name, I would come in and I just magically was able to do a zero. Because I know that's the start because it's the first thing in the elements. Well, I don't have that index. I don't know what the start is. You know, again, that's where head is. That's actually what head is kind of doing for us. But the same approach in array, in my array variable, what's next? Oh, well, I just happen to increase my index. And, all right, well, that's nice. But the big thing I wanted to focus in on is that word I used. I said, what's next? And that's where sort of nodes start to kind of differ a little bit. Let's say, for example, I created a node 1 and I added it to my list. For our sake, we'll worry about kind of that implementation a little later. But if I added in that node 1, we oftentimes see it implemented in some form or fashion like this. It's kind of two squares sandwiched together, and in that first left column, this is where we would classify 
we store the element. Again, because it could be a string, it could be a char, it could be any data type that we want it to be. Over here, though, this is where we would ask that next question. This would we actually create as a variable of the node class that we've implemented. The idea here is I could come in anywhere and point to whatever my next element is. Since this is the only element, say, in my list, it would point to null. That just means that I'm at the end of my list. But what if I then, in turn, came I'll keep that, that arrow there. I came in and I created a new node. And this time, just to kind of mirror what I've got going on here, we said node 2. Well, since I made one node this way, I can make a second node this way. That's still my element. And this now has its own next. And since there's nothing after this, I can give it the null. Same kind of approach comes into play as we then in turn make, I'll stop at node 3. I come in, I create it, boom, boom, boom. 